Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. For today's video, we are going to do a little breakdown of the four most popular super goop sunscreens. That's Georgie coming in. Welcome, we're just getting started here. This is one of those videos that I started to get requests for over a year ago. I added it to my to-do list and then it kind of just got buried in all of my video requests. So it's taken me over a year. I apologize if you happened to ask for this a year ago, but we are finally here. It is about dang time that we do this. So we're going to be comparing and breaking down each of these sunscreens, talking about ingredients, feel, formula, how they blend into the skin. We'll talk about the actual finish, if there's any sort of white cast, and I will give you my thoughts on which skin types I think that each of these sunscreens may be best for. So we're going to be breaking down the Unseen sunscreen, their Mineral Sheer screen, their Glow screen, and their Mineral Matte screen. So if you've been curious about these sunscreens, if they're worth a purchase, if there is one out of this bundle, that would be the best fit for you. If you're torn between two, any of those things, and you have come to the right spot, we are going to jump right into it. Before we do, if you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below. What should I have you comment today? Let me know what mm, your favorite ice cream treat is. That was the most random thing ever, but I really want ice cream right now. Let me know. Thanks for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm. Instagram and TikTok handles are right here. Lightroom preset filters, merch. What else? Literally everything else you could need from me is listed in the description box below, like timestamps, discount codes, links, etc. So check that out after this video or while you're watching if there's anything that you need from me. But that is everything, so let's jump right into this video. All right, let's start off with their Unseen Sunscreen. So this is just a funny one to me personally because about a year ago, I reviewed the Kylie Cosmetics sunscreen that launched and it is basically the exact same thing as this. And at the time that I was filming that review, I was like, wow, this is so innovative. I can't believe I've never seen anything like this before. Can't believe they came up with this sort of technology or concept for a sunscreen. And then with a quick Google search, I realized that it already existed in the form of this sunscreen right here. So <laughs> this was the innovative one, not Kylie Cosmetics. So this is a broad spectrum SPF 40. It has a PA rating of plus, plus, plus. So a full kind of a plus PA rating would be four pluses, plus, 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 plus. And that is just a measure of UVA protection. So this gets three out of four pluses is essentially what I'm trying to say. It's water resistant and sweat resistant for up to 40 minutes, which is excellent. And what they have to say about this is that it's the original, totally invisible, weightless, scentless sunscreen, <laughs> weightless, scentless sunscreen with SPF 40 that leaves a velvety finish. Oh, I see the original thrown in there. I know who they're talking about yes the original <laughs> let's talk ingredients now shall we so the active ingredients are all chemical filters that may be a deal breaker for you if you have incredibly sensitive skin and you are easily irritated by chemical sunscreens for me personally this doesn't irritate my skin and I do have very sensitive skin but of course that's not going to be a measure for all sensitive skin types just wanted to kind of let you guys know how this works for me so active ingredients are avobenzone homosalate octisalate and octocrylene active not active inactive ingredient highlights or the non-sunscreen filter ingredients that are really great include meadow foam seed oil, shea butter, jojoba esters, mannitol, lecithin, and vitamin E. So some really nice moisturizing, conditioning, softening, and hydrating ingredients thrown in this, which I love to see, of course, who doesn't? The one thing about this to also be mindful of if you have sensitive skin is that while it is fragrance-free and essential oil-free, it's not essential oil extract-free. So it actually does have frankincense in it. That uh, oh wait, the ingredients aren't on the back of this. Please hold. So the official name for frankincense apparently is olapinum. I had never seen that before in my entire life, but you'll see on the ingredients list, olapinum towards the bottom. And when you click on ingredients for this product on their website, it says SPF packed with powerful ingredients. The first thing they call out is frankincense. So they say that this will help the skin to be resilient and provide a soothing effect, but it definitely could be something that irritates sensitive skin because at the end of the day, it comes from an essential oil. So so thankfully it's towards the bottom of the label. There are no other essential oils or fragrances or anything like that. So I was okay putting this on because that's literally the only thing. It's like if there's one single extract, I'm not gonna call home about it. But you guys know I just like to call those things out as a fellow sensitive skin gal myself. 
All right, let's talk formula of this product. So it definitely does have a very unique consistency for a sunscreen. While yes, there's other brands like Kylie and even others that have sunscreens like this now, it still is not the norm to have a sunscreen like this that pretty much is the same thing as a silicone-based makeup primer. So if you have ever tried that Smashbox makeup primer that everyone was obsessed with years ago, I'm sure a lot of people still use it. It's really the exact same type of thing as that, but just with sunscreen added. So it's very silky, slippy, slidey. It's really lightweight, it's not greasy at all. So if you're into this sort of formula, then I think you'll really enjoy this one. It also blends great into the skin. I don't have issues with streaking or pulling or pilling. And even with the second application, I think that that holds true. And it just continues to be really nice and soft and smooth. And I think it feels and looks great if you like this sort of feel. If you're not into that kind of silicone slippery feel, then this one just won't be for you and one of these other ones will be. But what I think makes this sunscreen really set apart from the rest is the finish and the cast or lack thereof. So the finish is really, really nice and natural. It doesn't look greasy like I was saying or shiny on the skin. So if you're super oily, this is not going to be something that worsens that for you. But at the same time, it's not something that's completely flat and mattifying. That's definitely not a look that I like. It's it's just kind of there. Like it just looks like your skin, which I think is really cool. So I would say it has a natural, maybe demi matte finish, but definitely not fully matte. And I think it looks really nice. And of course it has a completely clear formula. So that means absolutely zero white cast. There's a lot of brands that claim to have zero white cast sunscreens. And you see that there's just a little bit of something. It's like, okay, maybe it's not as intense as 100% zinc, but no white cast is a stretch and that just will never be a problem with this. So if you have really deep to dark skin, you often deal with that and you just really struggle to find a sunscreen that completely absorbs into the skin with no cast at all, then this is going to be a perfect option for you. Or if you're just somebody that really wants a makeup primer, something that grips and holds on to makeup, will make any foundation or anything that you put on top of it really look nice and soft and smooth and kind of airbrushed and you want added sunscreen, then this will also be for you. You. So if you have super dry skin, I would say that this is probably not going to be your best friend unless you were to wear it on top of a thicker moisturizing cream. I would say this is probably best suited for anyone that has normal to oily skin. But you can, of course, really make anything work. Well, no, you can't. I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of things that you can make work depending on the products that you use with it. Like that can really transform something. So that is the Unseen Sunscreen. Next up, we have their Mineral Matte Screen. So this is also an SPF 40. It's also water and sweat resistant up to 40 minutes. For whatever reason, they don't list the PA rating of this one. So I'm not sure why they do that for some products and not others. But this is supposed to be a 100% mineral sunscreen that helps to leave the skin looking mattified and poreless. Active ingredients here are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide but it has 0.7% titanium dioxide so zinc oxide is really going to be your primary source of sun protection the titanium dioxide was probably just added for pigment purposes which you will see and not the sun protection so completely mineral going to be a safer option for those of you that do have sensitive skin ingredient highlights in this one include argon oil vitamin e iron oxides bisabolol summer lilac mulberry extract resveratrol and pentapeptide 21 so this is a stacked ingredient set if i do say so myself again we have things to help to condition the skin bisabolol is a really nice calming and soothing ingredient resveratrol is an excellent antioxidant and we have a peptide to help to replenish. I love all of this. The one thing I was nervous about is the summer lilac and mulberry extract. I thought they may be sensitizing, irritating plant extracts, but from what I was able to find, they actually don't seem to pose that risk. And instead they're just great antioxidants as well that can help to calm and soothe and condition the skin. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see that there doesn't seem to be any other plant extracts in this that could cause that problem. Kind of like frankincense may and no other fragrances or anything like that. In this one. This formula is just like Benefit Professional. So it's also like a makeup primer, but in a completely different way than the Unseen Sunscreen. And this type of thing is just really not my personal favorite. I feel like when I put it on, it makes my skin feel like it's sweating. Is that just me? That can't just be me. Please let me know if you feel the same way. It is still very soft and smooth and it blends really nicely into the skin. So it's not like there are any issues there with the formula. I just don't love products like this. You know, it's just a personal thing. The finish of this definitely does lean matte, which 
called a matte screen, so that makes sense. For me personally, it doesn't look dry on my skin, but I do have skin that leans a little bit oily, so I could see how this could look a little flat, lifeless, undimensional if you did have dry skin or if you have dehydrated skin and you have a lot of flakiness going on. This type of formula does tend to just cling to those areas, so it probably wouldn't work the best in that scenario either. And this does actually have a slight tint to it, so something that's not going to be universal for every skin tone, but if you were just using it as a makeup primer, then of course the positive thing to that is that foundation would cover that up and it wouldn't be a concern. But on its own, not going to be something that works for every skin tone. So I would say that this is going to be a great fit for those of you that are looking for something to kind of mask the appearance of pores. I do really think it has a nice pore blurring effect, even more so than the unseen sunscreen. So essentially, if you want benefit professional in sunscreen form, this will be for you. If you want the Smashbox primer in sunscreen form, unseen sunscreen will be for you. That's about all I have to say. Second to last, we have their Mineral Sheer Screen. This one is an SPF 30. They do let us know the PA rating of this, which is plus, plus, plus. So again, three out of four pluses. This one is not water or sweat resistant. And they say that this is a 100% Mineral Sheer Screen. <sighs> I need to slow down. Sheer Skin Protector that provides SPF 30 protection while helping to shield from blue light and prep skin for makeup. This is also a completely mineral sunscreen, so it has 17.5% zinc oxide as the active ingredient, and it does have some nice ingredients, not quite as impressive as some of the other sunscreens, but still some things to hydrate and soften the skin like glycerin, squalane, lethicin, aloe juice, sodium hyaluronate, even though that is the very last ingredient on the label, so who knows how much of that we're really getting. And that's about it. As far as plant extracts in this one, there is an ingredient third to last on the label called blush clover extract. It's also another that kind of has a different name. Not kind of, I mean it does. Les Bereza Capitata Leaf Stem Extract another that I was like, uh, what? Until I looked into it. And that's what they're calling blush clover. But I really couldn't find any information on blush clover. So I don't know if that is one that is going to be sensitizing or what the deal is with that. So just another to potentially be aware of. I'm a huge fan of how this formula feels initially initially. So when you're first applying it, it feels very soft and moisturizing, but it's not heavy or greasy. So I was super excited about it. But I realized that as you start to blend it in and it fully sets down, it does kind of have a sticky feel to it, a little bit of a tack. That makes for an amazing makeup primer, but on its own, I just, I'm not obsessed with the way that feels. And especially with the second application, I was like, oh, my hands even are sticky after. So if you would not be into that sort of thing, then this will be a pass for you. But the finish of this is something that I am personally a huge fan of. And I feel like this sort of finish is kind of hard to find in a sunscreen because it gives you that healthy kind of natural glowy looking radiance, that satiny finish without it being wet or overly dewy or shiny whatsoever. So I do feel like this would work with a lot of different skin types for that reason. But skin tones, it's maybe not quite as versatile because I feel like this is one of those sunscreens that does just leave a little bit of a white cast, especially with multiple applications. I will say that when you initially apply this, the white cast looks a lot worse than it actually ends up being. When you give it time to fully set and absorb into the skin, it does kind of subside a little bit. But even still, I feel like around the edges of my face, do faces have edges? Um, I don't know about that, but like hairline area around my chin, you can still see that there's a little bit of a white cast. And then when I add a second application, I think it becomes even more apparent. So it is something that you really wanna work with to blend in for that reason. But if you had deep to dark skin, this probably wouldn't work out for you. So again, this is something that I do think would work with a lot of different skin types. If you're incredibly, incredibly dry, probably not. And same thing, incredibly, incredibly oily, probably not, but really anywhere in between, I feel like you would enjoy this if you're okay with a slight white cast and okay with some of those blending issues. If not, then that will probably be a deal breaker, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they kind of reformulate this and make some of those things just a little bit better. I am being nitpicky with it because that's the point of this video, but if they came out with like a new and improved version of this that didn't have those blending issues and truly didn't have a white cast at all, I feel like this would be my go-to everyday sunscreen. It's almost there. Just not quite. And last but certainly not least, we have their glow screen, which is definitely the fan favorite, or so it seems from social media. This is an SPF 40. It has a PA rating of plus, plus, plus. It's not water or sweat resistant. And for this, they say it's an SPF 40 makeup gripping primer that leaves a dewy, glowy finish with sun protection and major hydration. 
I didn't realize that they considered a lot of these to be makeup primers. Three out of the four? Interesting. This one, like the Unseen Sunscreen, only has chemical filters, but a slightly different active ingredient set. So it has avobenzone, octusalate, and octocrylene. Another stacked ingredients list here. We have niacinamide, arginine, iron oxides, hyaluronic acid, phospholipids, cacao extract, panthenol, vitamin E, sunflower oil, and ferulic acid. So a really impressive combination of hydrating, softening, smoothing, calming, and antioxidant ingredients. Really, really nice. I was excited about that. This is by far my favorite formula out of the four. It feels almost serum-y. I mean, not quite. It's like if a serum and a lotion had a baby. It's so lightweight. It almost has this kind of watery element to it. It feels very hydrating and softening on the skin. I really, really enjoy it. And I have zero issues with this when it comes to application or blending. No pilling, streaking, pulling, smudging, anything like that with this one for me, even with multiple applications. The finish of this is not what I was expecting. When I saw glow screen, I was like, mm, this is probably not gonna work out for me. I feel like so many sunscreens already look really wet and shiny on the skin, especially as the day goes on and with multiple applications. And so anything that says glow or do in sunscreen form is typically something that just doesn't work out for my skin. But this isn't glowy in a dewy sense. It's glow, I mean, it does look healthy in that way, but it's not wet glowy. It's actually like pearlescent, illuminating glowy. And I actually really enjoy it. Thankfully, we do not have a white cast issue with this one, but at the same time, it's still not something that would work with all skin tones because it still has a tint or a pigment to it, even though it's not super intense. So I would say that it definitely pulls yellow or warm in undertone, and it is a little bit lighter. So if you have deep to dark skin, or even if you have really light skin, but it's super pink or cool in undertone, this would probably just look a little bit off on your skin. So I would love to see something that is more universal or a couple more shade options. While it's something that I really love on my skin, I know that it's not going to work for everybody. So if you have been searching for a product that gives your skin a really pretty, luminous, radiant, pearlescent glow without that coming from a wet, dewy finish, then this will be a perfect fit for you. Definitely not the kind of sunscreen for everybody, but the formula itself I do think is really versatile and would work with a lot of different skin types because it's just so nice and lightweight and not problematic when it comes to a sunscreen formula. So while it's not going to be everybody's favorite, I do think that it's a beautiful option. All right, you guys, those are all of my thoughts on these Super Goop sunscreens. I think that there are some really good options here. And what I really love about Super Goop is that they give us formulas and finishes that you can't necessarily find everywhere else or that you didn't used to be able to. Like they're giving us something different for a sunscreen, which is something that I really appreciate. There are improvements that I would love to see. I'd love to see an SPF 50, a PA rating of plus, 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 more color options available, some formula enhancements, but still some really solid options. And I am curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Have you tried any of these products? Are you going to test any out after watching this video? As always, I will have everything listed in my description box below if you're interested in purchasing anything but keep me posted on your thoughts either way. I am very curious as always. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. Thank you again so much for doing all of those things. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.